it's winter time. There's not a whole lot we can do on our land right now with the snow because the snow is really deep and can't get out there. But we're hoping that it compacts and we can get in here shortly because it has been warm lately. But uh, now we're really talking about planting our land or what we did when we planned our land. Um, we made a map. We took it, like I said, how we did it. We took a map, we got a sky image, and then we uh, took it and we mapped it out. We put our food pumps where we wanted them and our travel, that we want to put our travel corridors and where we would access our stands and everything. And then uh, mapped it up, put it all on paper, and then we, we, we took it to a, a habitat specialist. We, we took it to Joe Bartella, had him look at it. He, he told us and explained why we should change it, just a couple things on it. And we started working on it. It's a really good idea to have everything on paper on what you want to do. So this is how we started. First get an aerial photo of your land. Google Earth is a good place to start. Then add where you have or plan on adding food plots and bedding, keeping in mind that you want it all to flow together. Mark out deer runways or where you want them to travel to get from food plot to food plot to bedding to anywhere else you want them on your land but also steering them away from things like a cabin or your tree stand access or your ground line access. Now mark where you may want to put things like water holes or mock scrapes or anything else you can do to keep a deer roaming around on your land even longer. Just make sure to be creative and have fun with it. It'll all pay off in the end. Now at this point you don't have to you don't have to have everything in place. You know things like water holes or mock scrapes. That's something you can do after you get everything in and start walking your travel corridors to see where you want to put things for deer to slow the deer down to stop, make them stop and look at things and spend more time on your land, you know, when you're there. But the main thing is get the food plots in place and everything else like that. But get it on paper and make sure, you know, plan it out. Don't just wing it. And you know. But one thing I also like to do is I like to even plan out each food plot as far as how I'm doing it. Like where I'm putting the beds where I'm putting the stands or blinds, where I'm going to be putting trees or brush or screening to, you know, so they're not competing deer on this side and this side. There can be more deer and they're not going to be competing with each other. So that's how I like to do it, where I put trees, everything like that. So I just like notes. That's how well, I am. At the same time, you're always going to be adding other things to your land in places that you haven't used yet. I really, I, I like the idea of using every square inch of my land. Like I said, the main place to start for me was food plots, travel corridors, and bedding. But I might do this here and this there. The more I read, the more ideas I, I find out. No one even, no one even, not even the deer specialists have this figured out 100%. You sure like to talk to them to get their views on everything. But you know, so, but like I said, keep a basic plan. It's not also, it's also not realistic to think that if you do a couple things, your, your whole hunting season is going to change. You want to get it started and, and you know, let it progress. It's, it's, you're you're going to see improvement. We, every year we've done things, we've seen improvement on our land. But when we really started actually taking and planning it well, better, we've seen it gradually get better and better faster. So, like I said, having a good plan in place is a great idea. So, let's get to work. Be sure to like and subscribe to our page. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see any additional content. And comment down below maybe something else you want to see from us in the future.